We're going to draw for an animal here. Calvin has been giving me random genre prompts, and this one's going to be interesting and challenging. He didn't know what I was drawing for, and he gave me Victorian thriller, non-magic set in real life as the genre. So that's going to be a very interesting challenge for drawing for an animal. So let's see what comes up. Um, you may notice that the cards that we draw here are uh, almost identical if not identical to what we draw when we're putting together a monster. That's because animals and monsters have a lot in common. So we start with two texture cards to figure out what the monster looks like. We have an element looking for elemental affinity. Um, two, one to two habitat cards to figure out where it's from. And then one character card to find out its purpose within that environment. So let's start with the texture cards. We have feathers and slippery. Nice. Interesting. Okay. So what my first thought when Calvin told me he wanted me to do um, a Victorian thriller set in real life for an animal drawing, my first thought was I'm looking for an animal that goes in a freak show. Um, so feathers are interesting because normally when you have feathers on an animal, it's like yeah, the feathered things like to stay dry because feathers don't work quite as well when they're wet and they kind of naturally shed water. So it'd be kind of interesting and creepy and weird to have um, a bird type creature um, that is just covered in goo. Um, so like feathery, but also gross. So that's my first thought. Second thought, if I want to if I want to just run with the feathers. Um, is that this is an animal that's very elusive, it's hard to hold on to, likes to run away and slip away, and that could also provide some great conflict in the story. And, you know, maybe I'll run with both prompts. So let's keep going here and, and see what the animal's elemental affinity is. Chaos. Nice. Okay. And I want to see how we can find a way... To make this fit in with the Victorian thriller genre, I think what I might do here. So I'm I'm kind of looking for maybe a relationship between a character and the creature, something something that will make this character not just interesting to exist, but also interesting to somebody. Um, and I could see an animal that is naturally highly chaotic, um, being really. Oh, what's a word? Um, just kind of tantalizing and intriguing to somebody in a very Victorian culture where they're just expected to be polite um, all the time. So I'm kind of liking that. Like this, this is a character. Or sorry, this animal is something that um, I'm going to say is highly unpredictable. Uh, leaves a mess everywhere it goes. Um, it's not just gross, it's also, um, definitely a wild, wild animal. So, okay, let's find out where this thing is from. We have a combination of jungle and, oh, interesting. This was not a card I expected. So let me think. In the Victorian era temples so one of the things that's interesting about the victorian era is that was the era where civilization in europe began to stabilize a lot um and it made a lot of room for the society was so stable that they had time and resources to send botanists out into the wild to travel all over the world and look for interesting plants and animals and bring them back for the gardens of the kings and queens of Europe. Um, this is a very common pastime. Sometimes arist uh, aristocrats would do it too. Um, so I could see along the way. Um, during one of those expeditions, something was taken from the environment where it really belonged. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to run with a tropical Asia, I think. Um, tropical Asia, thereabouts, maybe the Philippines or something. Um, 
And this is the point at which I frequently, especially if I'm working in real life, um, I'll frequently stop drawing here. Um, at least pause the drawing. I, I definitely will come back to this card, but I'll at least pause the drawing and I will do research to see like, hey, is there a bird-like animal that exudes goo? Or is there a bird-like animal that's, that's considered holy in Asia? Or is there, you know, any, any creature that kind of generally vaguely fits the description, um, either in real life or in folklore in the area that could match either of these cards? So I don't have Google in front of me right now, but um, that's kind of how my thought process goes here so far, uh, is that I would look for real life correlates, um, anything in history or in the animal kingdom that could fit these cards. Because um, frequently I'll find, I'll learn weird new stuff. Um, and that's always really good fodder for stories. So let's find out what this animal's purpose within its habitat was. Oh, I love that when I have cards that will like match um most pictures within these cards have at least one other card with um a similar visual and we did that on purpose um because it can really help create a sense of cohesion and help you match um like cards when you want to so our first total forgiveness able to see through deception especially self-deception invites but never forces I could take a, a sacred stint to this, but I don't think I'm going to. There are a lot of animals in Chinese medicine, you know, and, and medicine throughout the world history, for that matter. There are a lot of animals where their parts are considered good for healing. Um, so I think what I might do um, is have this be some sort of animal where... If it's not slimy, at very least, it's sick and badly cared for. Um, but it's an initially an animal that's been hunted a lot, maybe hunted almost to extinction um, because some part or rather of it was considered good for healing. Um, so it's it's interesting here. And what I like about that first story is normally when you find an animal in a freak show, an animal in captivity, anything like that, normally the story arc is that you want to send it back to the wild. But what I love about this is that this puts the animal in a situation where where it came from isn't necessarily a great place either. Um, so you you don't want to leave it where it's at because it's being abused. You don't want to send it back where it came from because it will be probably be hunted and killed um, for parts, which leaves ultimately the best place for it to be. Um, if you can tame it, um, the best and most symbiotic possible environment for it would ultimately be to become a pet um, in your home where you can take care of it and protect it. Um, so yeah, so that's how you draw for an animal. Um, again, the cards that we use for this prompt, come on, flip. There we go. Cards we use for this prompt are two textures, one element for elemental affinity, two habitats to figure out where it came from, and a character card to figure out what its purpose in the environment is. Hope this is helpful. Uh, go ahead and try this drawing and let us know in the comments what you find.